So we are on test number one, section one reading, and this is the third passage. Again, make sure you have actually read the passage and answer the questions first before you watch this, or else it is not going to be very helpful at all. All right, so let's take a look at this passage. This is a science passage, and it is based on the works of Watson and Crick. If you took bio your freshman year, you probably remember some stuff about this. It is about the structure of DNA and about the bases. All right, so let's take a look at this passage. The first paragraph talks about, gets right into it about the chemical formula of deoxyribonucleic acid. I know this is a very dense passage and there are a lot of technical terms, but don't let that throw you off. What you wanna do is try to focus in on kind of the key points and there's really very little being said here. The main part of it is really focused on the structure of DNA. So again, it talks about how DNA is a very long chain. Uh, it talks about how the backbone is going to consist of an alternation of sugar and phosphate groups. It talks about how there are four bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Again, this is something you learn in bio. Okay, so you got the purines, and you got the pyrimidines and uh, moving on. Next paragraph talks about how you don't just have one backbone or one chain, it's actually two long chains. So the two long chains, that's what gives you the, uh, the twist helix shape of the DNA. All right, moving on down to line 22. Third paragraph here, it talks about the hydrogen bonds that bond in between the bases and hold the two chains together. The important thing to note here is on line 25 that only certain pairs of bases will fit into the structure. All right, uh, go down to line 35. So how does the pairing work? This is the most important thing. Adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. Again, you probably remember this from bio. This is a very important fact. Line 40 talks about how any sequence of the pairs of bases can fit into the structure. So even though the pairing is very specific, the sequence of the bases can be different. And it really depends on the sequence. And this is what on line 45 is going to determine the genetic information. Line 46 tells us that if you know the sequence of bases on one side of the chain, you would be able to use that and based on the pairing, figure out what the sequence is on the other side of the chain. Line 50 and 51 kind of talks about how this is how DNA probably duplicates itself. Moving on to the table here, this is the base composition of DNA. Taking a look at this table, what stands out as being kind of an interesting fact? Well, it is not the fact that the percentages of all four are the same. Okay, that is only kind of right for the maize. Maize, by the way, is corn. But if you look at the other organisms, they are different in their percentages. All right, so again, going back here, based on the pairing, adenine with thymine, guanine and cytosine, you'll see that the adenine and thymine percentages are about the same. So you got 26.8, 33.2, 28.0, over here, you got 27.2, 31.6, 28.4. Same goes for the guanine and cytosine. Those percentages kind of match up as well. And that's what you would expect based on the information that they have provided. All right, so let's move on to the questions then. If you find this tutorial and walkthrough to be helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, you can check out my website at www.solutionsbayarea.com. So let's continue. We're gonna to go to the questions here. And question number 22, the authors use the word backbone, lines three and 39 to indicate what? Well, if you take a look, going back over here, it talks about the backbone, which consists of regular alternation and we're gonna go down to line 39, also talks about the word backbone. The reason why they use the word backbone is that it is the main structure of the DNA. Be very careful, a lot of people choose choice C, which is wrong, 
a chain in a DNA molecule consists entirely of phosphate and groups or, sh or of sugars? That is not the point. We're going to move on to question number 23. Student claims that the bases pair up randomly with each other. Well, as we well know, they do not pair up randomly. Looking back at the passage, going at 27 to 29, it talks about how one member of a pair must be a purine and the other is a pyrimidine in order to bridge the gap. So that is going to be D. Number 24. What do the authors claim to be a feature of biological interest on 1219? So going back here, uh, the biological interest is that it contains not it consists not of one chain but of two. So that is the most important thing. So that's going to be D. Question 25. Why do they include the information about the x-ray evidence and the density? Looking back here, we've got on line 18, 19, they type a density here and the x-ray evidence, which suggests that there are two chains that form the DNA. So that is going to be choice C. Moving on to 26, if a pair consists of two purines, there would be not room for, uh, there would not be enough room for it. 2930, let's take a look right there. So why would two purines not fit? Purines would be larger than a pair consisting of a purine and a pyrimidine. Moving on to number 27 exact specific complement why does the author use those words on 47 to 49 so taking a look here at 47 49 we've got if the exact uh the actual order of the bases on one of the pair of chains were given one could write down the exact order of the bases on the other again that's just to show that the pairing is very very specific so the answer is going to be d 28. Based on a table, what gives the correct percentages of the purines in yeast DNA? If you go back to the passage, the purines are adenine and guanine, the pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. So they're talking about the purines of yeast DNA. Looking at this table right here, we're looking at the adenine and the guanine. So we're looking at 31.3 and 18.7 that is going to get you choice C right here moving on number 29 do the table data and table support the author's proposed pairing of bases in DNA all right well if you look at this again adenine and thymine percentage is about the same guanine and cytosine percentage is about the same and that's exactly what they're talking about here where they said that the pairing is very specific adenine with thymine guanine with cytosine so the answer is going to be yes it is a all right question number 30 according to the table which of the following pairs in sea urchin DNA provides evidence in support of the answer to the previous question. So we're going to look at the sea urchin here. And again, the only things that match up to the 32.8, 32.1, or the 17.7 and a 17.3. So that is going to be right there. So those match up. You're looking at an answer of A. 31, based on table, is the percentage of adenine in each organism's DNA the same or does it vary? Well, obviously, you look at the adenine percentages, it's all different. Okay, um, so looking at the different choices here, it is going to be D. It definitely varies. Let's look at 41 to 45. We're going to go back there. Talks about how there are different permutations that are possible of the bases and that the sequence of the bases is what carries the genetic information. So obviously every organism is going to have a different sequence of bases because the genetic code is different. 